In this lecture, we'll talk about variables and primitive data types using examples. Before I talk about variables with primitive data types, it would probably be helpful to talk about what a variable actually is. What are variables anyway? You can think about a variable as a container in which stuff can be stored. Kind of those kitchen storage containers. They come in different sizes to store different types of things. One day, you want to use the container to store cheese. A week later, you might want to use it for something else. Variables are very similar. They store things. Things otherwise known as values. They can be emptied and you can store another value in them later. For example, if you look at that following piece of code, what we have done here is create a variable called my container and give it a value of cheese. We have done this using the assignment operator, which is a fancy title for the equal to sign. Giving something a value is also called assigning a value or initializing a variable. But you might be wondering, what is the string? All variables need to have two things. The first is a name, like my container, and the second is a data type. In this example, my container is a variable of string data type. The data type is always stated before the variable name. The following are all valid ways to create variables. String, integer, boolean. The last one is tricky because we have created a variable b of the type boolean, but we haven't assigned it a value, or I would say we haven't yet initialized it. But that's okay. You can do it all at once, or you can first declare a variable and initialize it later. To add comments in your code, you can start them with two slashes. In our storage container analogy, containers come in many shapes and sizes. Just right for storing things large, small, and well, differently shaped. In the same way, we have different variable data types to store different types of data. There are simple data types and complex ones. Let's talk through the simple or primitive data types first. The easiest way to explain what makes a data type primitive is to say that it can't be broken down into simpler components. One way to think about it is using measuring spoons. If a recipe calls for two-thirds spoon of chili powder, try as you might, you'll not find a two-thirds measuring spoon. There isn't one. Measuring spoons are made for the primitive amounts you need for cooking. We don't need two-thirds measuring spoon because you could just use one-third measuring spoon twice. I'll explain what makes a data type non-primitive when I talk about collections. The table below lists various primitive data types in Apex with examples of how you might declare a variable of that type and assign a value to it. We have boolean, string, integer, long, decimal, double, id, blob, date, date time, and time. id is the 18 character force.com record identifier. Blob is actually used to hold files, images, or documents. And the others are pretty straightforward, I guess. What makes a variable data type non-primitive? Another way to think about primitive data types is to compare them to non-primitive data types. For example, this colors list. Bear with me on this. We haven't talked about lists yet. This colors list data type contains four elements of the string data type. So if you notice, the list can be broken down, which makes it non-primitive. And the strings can't be broken down, which makes them primitive. You'll understand this better when we talk about collections in the next lecture. So you can see that we have quite a few basic building blocks to work with here. For those of you awesome Salesforce admins, you can guess most of the Apex data types for the field types that you see in the Salesforce UI. Auto number uses string, checkbox uses boolean, number uses integer or double based on the decimal places, phone uses string and not integer because phone number might have special characters like a dash or a parenthesis in between, and rest of them you can easily guess like text, text area, text area long, all of them use strings. 
There is more I can say about primitive data types, but that's all I could possibly hope for anyone to absorb. To quickly summarize, variables are like containers that hold things. Variables must, at a minimum, have a name and a data type. And data types come in two flavors, primitive and non-primitive. Primitive data types can't be broken down into smaller data types, example strings. Non-primitive data types can be broken down further. We'll circle back to this topic in the future when we discuss variables with non-primitive data types. In the next lecture, I'm going to expand on variables and talk about the powerful idea of collections.